All right, um, now I'm going to show you guys how to set up your scene using a picture. Um, I had a person ask me for this, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the Slice tool, and I'm going to go View, and I'm going to make sure Snap is on. Um, this always helps with the Slice tool. So the first thing I'm going to do is select my Slice here, and then I'm going to make sure that my next one here is basically along the same lines and then just for, for what I'm doing here I'm gonna make sure my arm is selected too. Now when you're doing this when you're choosing your slices um, the thing that you want to always make sure is you always want to make sure and zoom up and make sure that the, the slices are even on the tops and the bottoms. Okay, It doesn't really matter width because we can change the width later um, and then I'm going to go file export or save for web and I'm going to just do a PNG real quick and I'm going to do fit on screen so you guys can see now what I'm going to do here is um, use my slice selection tool so this one is selected I'm going to select this one and I'm going to select this one and then what I'm going to do is Again, make sure it's all the same PNG. And I'll give it a second here. And then I'm going to save this. Now, I'm going to do images only. And I'm going to do, instead of all slices, I'm going to just do selected slices. And then what I'm going to do is just type this off as, you know, test woman. So you guys can see um, what I'm doing here. All right. And that's going to save. And we're done, basically, with Photoshop. Now, as you can see, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our test folder here, and you've got three images, okay? You've got basically the um, front, and I'm going to just rename them for easy easy uh, finding later. And then you've got the side, and then we've got the arm. All right, and so with those, we can go back. We, we're done with Photoshop. We're going to go into... Um, 3D Studio Max or any of your modeling programs and then all I did was created a box it really doesn't matter how high how wide the box is because we can actually go in there and fix that down the road um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert real, real quick this box to um, a edible poly and that's just my personal preference um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select go into the object level of this box, select the whole thing, and if you scroll down, you will notice it has some place here. Flip, okay, and I'm gonna flip this. Now, it doesn't look like much when you flip it right off the bat, and I'm gonna just zoom in so you guys can see this whole Alright, so it doesn't look like much when you flip it, but what you want to do is you always want to go to right click and you want to go to object properties. Okay, first thing that you want to do is you want to say, um, I believe back face culling on, okay? And by back face culling, what that's going to do is um, normally when you flip it, uh, you're going to see the, the other side of the box because the new versions of 3D Studio Max um, will turn it just the same color that, that it's selected up here. Um, previous versions um, will turn it black and, and uh, the real old versions actually will make this transparent So, or actually disappear the face. So what I want to do is I want to flip this and the reason I want to flip this is because we're going to model the box on the inside. Okay. Um, so then what we're going to do is I'm just going to actually uh, take this box and I'm going to go in here and actually in, go into polygon mode here and I'm going to select the this face right here and I'm going to select uh, no, I ain't going to let me do it. I'm going to select this, this interface here and I'm going to go down and check out the um, ID set okay now for the most part since I'm doing this box 
as a two object box, I don't really need to take a look at the tops. So I'm going to delete the tops of the box. And then I don't really need the back side here. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to just delete this back side face here. And it's all depending on how you do it. Some people have all the sides on there. Um, so we're going to select this one and we're going to make sure this is one. And I'm going to do a side here and uh, make sure this is two. Oops, I'm sorry. Two. And I'm going to set the ID. And I'm not really going to use this side at all. So I'm going to delete this. And so basically we, we boil down to two sides. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go my material. And I'm going to I'll just go up here. I'm going to pick a multi-sub object right here. And say OK. Keep multi-sub object material. And then I'm going to set the number. And since we're only using two images, I'm going to say two. And actually, we're going to go up and use a regular standard material for this. I'm going to go to Diffuse. I'm going to pick a bitmap material. And then I'm going to go to my test folder. And I'm going to go to my images and all formats. And the first one I'm going to do is my front. And I'll. Uh, I, I recommend always uh, labeling your fronts and sides and stuff. And then on two, I'm going to pick a standard and I'm going to pick a bitmap image. As you can see, this is pretty consistent. And I'm going to pick my side here. Okay. So now the reason I do a box um, is because that with a box, you automatically get lined up sides. Whereas planes, you kind of have to putts around and, and work on it a little bit. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to click on the display image set here. And now the first thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to go on to this one here and I'm going to just actually go in and we're going to detach this. And we're going to just detach it as an object and this object is the side view. And when you're done with that, I'm going to just stick on a UV mapping. Oops, I forgot to, well, the UV map can stay there too. Select this one and go to UV mapping here. And I'm going to do a planar and I'm going to fit it according to the picture here. Now, when you fit, you get, you get the regular size image here. Now, I always like a bitmap fit um, because that one will actually tell you, when you look at it, that one will actually tell you if you're going off the image. And I actually sized it up pretty well here. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this one and I'm going to show the image there too. Actually, we can go into The front here and I can uh, show the image on that one too and again I want to do a bitmap fit on this and make sure it's the front one and as you can see you can see this uh, image is a little bit off um, I always can, you can always go back to vertex mode grab these vertexes and just move them a little bit over and then you can actually go into the, the gizmo and move the gizmo left or right. Okay, now make sure you don't grab this because sometimes you might go up or down. Okay, now once that's done, now with this one right here, I can, um, it's good enough technically to start modeling, you know, your front view, your side view, that type of thing. Um, but what I'm going to do with this is, uh, I think I'm going to, actually set this one up here. I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to turn off back face culling and see how that did that and then what we're going to do is we're going to go into um, this and just make them two-sided and 
let's double check this, make sure back face calling is unchecked. There we go. So this gives you the back face calling. The next thing I'm going to do is go right click and go to properties and you want to make sure that it does not cast shadows and it doesn't have atmospheric effects, does not receive shadows say okay and you want to do that with the second one and the reason with is if you're doing realistic um, if you're doing realistic things what you're going to do is it's going to cast the shadow so now these don't cast the shadows and then what I can do is I can center this up here so it's it doesn't have to be perfect you know but something close now uh, with this what you can do is you can go into object properties again and we can freeze this okay and then you can make it so that it's um, show frozen and gray we're gonna uncheck that and we're gonna make it see-through okay and say okay and did that one do it the way I wanted it no it didn't so I'm gonna unfreeze all Go to object properties and uncheck the see through. We're going to just have to make it work. All right, so right click, I'm sorry, go right click, go to object properties, go to uh, uncheck frozen and gray, and go here, object properties, uncheck frozen and gray, and then uh, I'm just going to grab both of these and freeze them. Okay, now. Um, what we've done is essentially created our front and back sides for our, our model packs, okay? So now what you can do is if I would create a box, and we're just going to go back here, and I'm going to just create a box for this area, okay? And then I'm going to go back into this now that it's in the right spot. Um, now what you can do is right click on to the or right click on to this or and go to object properties and go to see through say okay and that'll give you the ability to do a um, start your modeling okay the other thing you want to do is you want to go to I always like doing shading because the see through is better now there's another way to do this um, I know this video is running a little bit long, but uh, there's another way to do this. And uh, what I'm going to do is right click uh, or Alt X and that'll go to see through. There's another way that I, I used to do this and a, um, it, it's been, um, what it does is create a animatable material. Okay. And then what you're going to do, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to set auto key and I'm gonna hit put in uh, this color I'm gonna basically create zero oops opacity um, 100 and I'm gonna hit enter and that's uh, not creating a key right now so I'm gonna hit opacity zero and that's not creating key anymore either alright so so there we go um, Sorry, I was off thinking here. Um, so anyway, what happens is at 100, you create a key in this material. And then you move over to uh, here. It creates the opacity key of 0, and it disappears the, the opacity. So then what you can do is actually apply this material to this. And you can actually take off auto key here. And now you can actually create an, a back and forth slider so that you can go back and make sure your material turns as transparent as you want it. So that way when you're modeling according to your windows, now I'm going to just do all right, my views here. So what you can do is actually as you model and you want to see a little bit more of the transparency, you can go back and forth. Okay? And that makes a really simple model pack too, so you can actually go in and move your lines and stuff and back and forth. And this always works really good, um, especially if the uh, graphics card you have doesn't really uh, do the transparency well. I know sometimes it'll either show it or not show it with certain graphics cards. 
and doing an animatable material will do the same thing. Um, I give you just more control over it. And that's again why I like the uh, the real, um, I'm sorry, not the uh, the shaded view versus the new realistic view is because the shaded view is I think a little bit easier to see with the, the graphics cards, uh, lower end graphics cards, um, and it doesn't give you the pixelation. So that's pretty much how to set up a model pack for animation. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I think the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to just start modeling this character for, I'll do torso, arms, legs, head, and I'll show you guys how to set up that. that. All right, so thanks much for viewing. Bye.